Um, <laughs> yeah, no, one of the first things I saw when I moved to this country was an ad for a, a like a billboard ad uh, at an S1 station. I want to say Boiselstrasse. And Sounds about right. Yeah, <laughs> there's an ad there. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen plenty of ad <laughs> at, at Boislerstrasse. There's a billboard of Boislerstrasse. We're gonna be talking. Except. We're gonna be talking a lot about just the city of Berlin today, baby. Mm. You know, so get your get Crack your maps open out. Maps.google.com <laughs> <laughs> and type yeah. it in Berlin. Um, yeah, no, the 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 ad was for a sports beer. Uh, I, yeah, well, it's not a sports beer. What it is mm. is it is. Um, Beer companies sponsor like the German national team. Mm-hmm. And I think it's Kombacher. They're like one of them is the sponsor for the for the 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 Deutsche Fußballbund. Okay, and then another one is a sponsor for the Bundesliga. Okay, so there was no football on this. It could have just been a logo, very small at the bottom that you didn't notice. Okay, so the ad was uh, the 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 prototypical uh, um, German Berlin green voter, which is to say, yummy single dad. Um, yeah, a little bit of salt and pepper in the beard running and then the end of his like one picture of him running and then another picture of him just like housing this beer and it literally said sports beer and it was like low <laughs> alcohol isotonic but still like a beer yeah that's like a sketch from a actual british sketch show uh, uh, um oh oh my god the guys peep show did uh mitchell and web look they literally did the joke lucas ate port uh, uh, okay. Yeah, which is like Lucas Eight is an energy drink in the UK, and Port is Guinness and shit. Yeah. No, wait, no wine. It's type of yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay, this country's on a different level. And then also, I saw someone put a beer in the cup holder up there, like pram, while pushing <laughs> their kid around. <laughs> and this was a classy neighborhood. <laughs> like, this yeah. was not like. No, I mean, like there is like there are some parts of the of the of the like beer culture that I think are like good and normal like being able to put your beer in the uh, the your stroller mm. is that is that what a pram is oh no i would say oh no no you don't want to get started what i'd say i'd say pug, i say buggy okay yeah, yeah i'll say i'll say stroller yeah, yeah, yeah. um the fact that you can do that in this country and that's like normal and cool and it doesn't like determine class in yeah. any way very good um but yeah also the fact that like drinking and driving is technically like legal in bavaria is also <laughs> maybe like that is the state i would have suspected <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh god we're gonna talk a little bit about bavaria later um, but I, I I also just wanted to say before we go any further that I had a very uncorner spatey day. Oh yeah, explain if this makes any sense. Um, I ended up at um, well, first I had coffee with a friend, and someone recognized me, um, and caught me very very like off guard. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, you're from the podcast." So whoever that was, if you're listening, I'm so very sorry. <laughs> um, I have I had a very weird day, yeah. and uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't mean to be weird. So that was that started Still the day. Not used to the confrontation of like I had that at uh, our friend's birthday where yeah. um, some guy was like, "Are you the guy from Twitter?" And I'm like, "Oh no, it's finally happened." <laughs> yeah, it's very it's 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 not a fun feeling. No, it's um, weird. You know, being a uh, being a uh, you know a it's, cool guy. <laughs> it's a fine feeling, but just for the first couple of times it happens, do not expect me to respond like a normal person. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, and then so after that, my friend was like, oh, hey, yeah, my plans got canceled. Um, she was supposed to go to like the, 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 the doctor or whatever. And she was like, there's a screening of like this Turkish movie that's, that was like banned in Turkey recently. Do you want to come and see it with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like what time is it at? And she was like, okay, like, like we have to like, you know, we have to rush over there then. And uh so we go and then grab a burger very quickly on the way over so f- i know very much sounding like a, a very corner spatey day yes yeah, i okay. know me getting a, a vague burger <laughs> and a then, vague, okay <laughs> all right yeah and then going to babylon the the uh the the very cool movie theater from the turn of the century hmm. that's at was luxembourg platz yeah and there's <laughs> they were having a, a film festival hosted by the european parliament Oh, fun. And that's where it <laughs> takes a, you know, massive U-turn. Yeah. And I end up... Jean-Claude like, Juncker was there. <laughs> drunk. And so I went to, like, a screening of, a, of, of this movie, which was very good, a Turkish film called, uh, I have it here, Burning Days, which, oh, okay. was, which, was, cool. a, which was a very, very, very good movie. Uh, I do recommend it um, if, you know, 
I'd actually, you know, it would, it would, it would be a good episode. To, uh, it would be a good thing to maybe like talk about if we're going to talk about the Turkish elections because we have to. It's, yeah, it's, it's gearing up because the film did a really good job of kind of depicting corruption yeah. in these like really far out places in like Anatolia and whatnot. So it was very good in that it's been banned officially by the Turkish government for being gay. Oh, um, which, well, that's Erdogan's with strategy right now. Yeah, Did you see, he called everyone gay. Yeah, so he was just like. Kurds, gay. gay. IYP, gay. <laughs> CHP, gay. Gay, yeah. So this movie has been declared as being Not gay. <laughs> but however, there's the most, like, I, I, I don't, like, there's the most, like, the, the 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 very slightest homosexual undertone in a movie like mm. v- not even really alluding to it half the time just yeah. maybe just like oh will they won't they for right. like a second uh you know maybe they like the two men look too dreamily in each other's eyes or whatever who knows yeah, forbidden <laughs> but um yeah so ending up at a, at a european parliament uh, uh sponsored mm. like go europe yeah. You know, everyone was was wearing the like Europe sweater oh, and yeah. stuff. Like they were like <laughs> like it was like a, in a u like a uniform that they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's a movie that was banned in Turkey, sponsored by the European Parliament. Don't ask how it would fare in like Poland or Hungary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't uh, I don't know if now I'm a fan of the European Parliament or not because I got to saw a, a good movie for free. Nick Maybe is this dressed is, in a full. Yeah, I got a full. In e, one of those missing star. The missing star yeah. EU ones. This is not a uniform. This is my my real life. <laughs> God damn it! I wear my politics on my sleeve, baby. Um, my day was mostly taking care of my kid, reading a little bit of that new Quinn Slobodian book about like city states. And like, it's very interesting, but it just reminded me of something that I feel like I need to bring up again, which was that plan in the 80s that the British Foreign Office had to, to move all of Hong Kong to oh. Ireland. <laughs> uh, in, w- in, a, in, in a, you know, two birds, one stone solution of like, shit, we're going to have to hand this over to the Chinese in a couple of years. And two... What if we solve the troubles by adding a third population of 5.5 million Chinese people? Just right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, in a, in a new yeah. city, they were going to put on a, a, a lock foil. Uh, um, yeah. I remember that episode For, that we talked about that with Milo, right? That yeah, was like that was one of our first like remote cor- uh, uh, corona, corona episodes. episodes. Yeah. Where I was just like grabbing for anything, and I was like, "Oh yeah, there was this insane plan they had to I make recorded new f- Hong Kong upon foil or whatever." The fuck. Yeah, I recorded the first bit of those those remote episodes just in bed. Yeah. I just i i i really just was so sloth during the uh, during the first few weeks of of lockdown. I accepted that my bed was my was my abode, yeah. and I was not leaving. <laughs> All right. I think to be fair too, it also was like cold in Berlin too at that time. And my yeah, it was the, my it was apartment winter, in yeah. yeah, my apartment in Gunsa, uh, like in Gunsa Keats mm. at that moment was one of those like very cool, like built in like the nineteen tens buildings, you know, that had like super high ceilings and really big rooms yeah. and like the really nice floors, but they were just super fucking cold. Yeah, heating is a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then you like step foot into one of uh, those. That apartments. apartment was gorgeous. Anything built in like the fifties or sixties where the walls could probably withstand a shell from like a, a TR like <laughs> fucking tank or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, God, I never have to turn on my heating ever, do I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Berlin baby. Not jealous at all. I'm also living. I'm I'm living in a like 1900s building where the pipes for my kitchen sink hadn't been used since the war, um, so that was fun. Oh yeah, weren't your like pipes all clogged up when they you were all clogged it? up? And oh. everyone was like, "Oh, this is clearly your fault." Until we got like one plumber in who just came back from the basement covered in mud, just <laughs> muttering the words in German: "Mud, mud, 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 mud." And I'm like, right? Because <laughs> like in most of our buildings. <laughs> Everyone's on the same fucking pipes, except for my apartment. I go through the like the middle of the building, and then everyone else goes through the sides. No one had used it since fucking 1950, when the building was rebuilt with like chalk or whatever to rapidly like get houses again in this city, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> It is me, Kieran, and I'm joined by Nick. 
Nick. Hey. And we have a special guest, author, Berlin, uh, uh, a walking tour guide and a uh, um, Berlin historian, I'm going to say, Nathaniel. Hello. Hey, thanks hey. for having me here. Absolutely no problem. Sorry I was late. I could have kept that from the audience, <laughs> but I chose Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's hearing this live on air right now at, you know, you know, I, I will, WCSP. I will talk to you. I will text you nonstop tomorrow. Don't edit it out. The people need, <laughs> the to, people know. need to know that I was late to the recording. That I was uh, underneath a sick baby watching the new uh, Netflix rom-com um, about a woman who's a successful travel agent in the year 2023. <laughs> somehow finding love in uh, with a Vietnamese tour guide. Oh, are you sure that this also wasn't an entry into the European the European Parliament's film contest? Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, Is that what the baby picked? Baby demanded some I politically like, correct rom-coms. I was like, what's not going to have a bunch of loud noises in it? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, at first I thought that you said that you're watching the news with your baby. That's what I was expecting, not new yeah. rom-com. I'm getting her early into Euro news. Yeah, right? I'm like, are you sitting there just like watching like... Bam, 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 bam. Never. I would All right. <laughs> you would never expose your child to Tagesschau. Absolutely the not. Tagesthemen. I need the people, I need the fine people over in, in the Brussels office of Euro news to know that their audience has gone up. By one additional purpose person. That's right, a hundred percent increase. In <laughs> yeah, but it's still just one TV, so yeah. it doesn't get, get <laughs> counted really <laughs> unless your <laughs> unless your daughter is streaming. <laughs> I'll live that very modern life where I've gotten her own TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I'm so excited though. We've we've talked a little bit about Berlin geography, which has gotten me in Berlin Modus. Which, if you're not in Berlin Modus, then um, you can um, you know just get on out of here. Yeah. Because um, we have, uh, you know, uh, the thing that'll probably piss off all the people who are like, oh, these two Katogana and this and that and that yeah. is all a bunch of people, you know, whatever. Um, two people very much not from Berlin yeah. and a person writing about Berlin. But I'm not from Berlin either. No, no, I'm I know that you're Katoga. not, but a person <laughs> also not from Berlin who then wrote a book about Berlin. Right. <laughs> Well, I think that the Zugezogner really define uh, Berlin. You know, it's us that are complaining the most about exactly. uh, how the city's changing. The yeah. thing is, too, is that we complain about the right things. We're all on the same team. Yes, yeah, so the thing the thing that always happens, though, is that there is, I'm not sure if you found this, but particularly online, there's the firm dividing line of, like, look, I may be from Baden-Württemberg and now live in Bavaria. But if you are not from Germany and live, yeah. <laughs> live, or like live in Berlin now, go get fucked. Yeah, um, it's even like other countries in Europe too, which is so funny. It's like it's not even like directed at anyone particular. Oh, just, yeah, 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 it's like I mean, yeah, there's like more and less hatred towards other you know certain countries and whatnot. Some of them, I think, know that they can't yell too loudly about Polish people. Being yeah, 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 yeah. But other than that, and the yeah. French, they're like fine with you know <laughs> more or less. I think, yeah, it's a kind of whenever they think the country you're from is fine, then they get angry that you came here. Yeah. That's that's because, yeah, Germans think that like Fra like that France is significantly worse than Germany, but that the French <laughs> like that the French like yearn for German types of freedom, even though like yeah. the like, you know, whatever it is, the Gini coefficient of the countries are like identical. If not, France's is probably a little bit better, <laughs> better than 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 Germany's because of like you know, social welfare also, and whatnot. You, it, it takes you, was it in Germany, it takes 23 generations to get out of your tax class or something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, hell yeah, cool. Second lowest in the OECD. Oh. I think South Korea is worse. Uh, okay. Yeah. What, how many How many generations in South Korea? It's probably just like 23 and a half. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Well, it's because of the schools here too, right? That yeah. They take yeah. little nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds and say, okay, you didn't work hard enough on your coloring assignment, so uh, we <laughs> yeah. decided you're never going to yeah, go to You're going to work in the salt mines. <laughs> <laughs> you see that giant thing we've deployed in Lutzerat to carve up the entire ground? Yeah, you got to drive that. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I want to drive Germany's mech. Um, anyway. it, oh, I just want to say, it is, like, isn't it the biggest machine that humans have ever built? Probably, that thing in Lutzerat? Yeah. Like, yeah. Would be, I mean, it should be destroyed or whatever, but it would be kind of cool to drive it once before it's... Uh, I just want to see... Oh, duh, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, like, that's the thing, is that when I saw that, I was like, 
I, I'd, I'd like to use it once, just not there. <laughs> it's the same. I think it's the same kind of feeling one has when they shoot a gun at a range, being like, "Yeah, all right, yeah," in a controlled environment, only here, <laughs> never like just will. Yeah, <laughs> not just gonna yeah, just <laughs> pop a few rounds at home. <laughs> um, but I just want to see. The oh, gun. I mean, like, yeah, that's one. Like, I mean, especially growing up in like a red state in a very pro-gun household. Yeah, hundred percent. That's definitely a thing. That thing you're like, yeah, guns are cool because I get to go do it in this one spot. Yeah. The important thing is everyone keeps their, every German household keeps their giant mining mech in a, yeah. in a locked cabinet. <laughs> Only use when you feel very threatened. Yeah. <laughs> not, not like fucking Mecklenburg 4 Portman where they have open carry with those things. <laughs> Just walking around. Yeah. With yeah, use it in a safe space, like take it down to Zehlendorf, all yeah. the villas belonging to German and Russian oligarchs mm-hmm. there and just... Just go nuts. Find some brown coal, you know? <laughs> we have it on very good authority that there's coal underneath here. <laughs> That's all we need, yeah, yeah. And Agnet. <laughs> um, but before we get too much into uh, 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 Berlin chicanery... We're going to take a little trip around Europe. We're going to take one small sojourn away from Europe down to sunny Spain. Oh, so we're doing the most German thing ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Juan Carlos the first again, because I love him. He's become he's become a a a, a, a tema for you to say the oh, least. Absolutely. So for anyone who doesn't remember, this is the this is the king uh, uh, now ex king who fucks too much. Who was being slipped estrogen by the secret service to stop him from like having too many illegitimate heirs, um, allegedly um, in a tell all book by a former like cop um so he's he's in the news again because we have found one of his illegitimate children you personally <laughs> <laughs> yeah kieran kieran's been doing some 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 what is it gumshoe journalism <laughs> so there's a there's a book on the like there's a spanish book coming out called king corp uh, uh um like corporation king yeah yeah about like all the various scandals and weird shit that he got up to uh, and in a preview given to the press, they dropped this knowledge of a one Alejandra, who uh, um, the way that you said that made it sound like there's was like music <laughs> afterwards, like the fucking like Quentin Tarantino movie yeah. <laughs> title card. Alejandra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You could have just said Alejandra. <laughs> um, she was born at some point in the late seventies, early eighties, and is now married with a son. She didn't know who her dad was up until very recently, uh, possibly when the investigator, like the, the investigative journalists who are writing this book kind of put it together and informed her. Uh, although I've been informed that she's just been receiving just like boatloads of money for her entire life. So I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, yeah, nothing weird there, you know. <laughs> nothing, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm building, I'm building. So, mom is anonymous, but we all we know is that she's from, like, an aristocratic family in Spain. Yeah. Um, however, the only piece of information we have on Juan Carlos's reaction to this is that, quote, he always feared that her and Felipe, the current king, would meet and fall in love, <laughs> not knowing that they're steps <laughs> 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 It's like a modern fairy tale, yeah, you know? Right? <laughs> uh, Maybe Netflix could make a rom-com about that. I think that. Pornhub will make that rom-com. <laughs> yeah, no, that one already exists. Uh, oh, no, you're my... <laughs> you're my step... No, you're my thing. half. No, can't. Well, yeah, Pornhub no, legally step, can't. Half. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, it's like it's half. It's half brother sister. Legally, Pornhub can't do that one. Yeah, because Visa would shut it down immediately. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's happening. Uh, um, but you can just switch it around, easy, yeah, make it. You know, step. Even. You know, step brother, step sister. Then, uh, um, other piece of information to do with the Spanish royal family. His granddaughter, Victoria Federica de Marichala y Bourbon, um, ran over someone with a horse in April <laughs> and then immediately fled the scene. Uh, As one does. <laughs> As one does. <laughs> when they're doing a hit and run on a horse. <laughs> uh, this the, was an equestrian a, hit and run, if you will. This was the April Fair in Seville. Um, she is, as, as far as I understand it, she's like an influencer of sorts or like various gossip mags tried to make her a thing. Yeah. She's just like knocking around. She's 22 years old. 
Um, and then also we get to her brother, who has uh, um, joined their his grandfather, Juan Carlos I, in exile in the UAE. Because that's the other thing about this. Yeah, of course, and yeah. He just flies back and forth between Dubai and uh, Spain because the rest of Europe wants to arrest him, but he still, because he's royal family, still has immunity in Spain. So you can only take direct flights. Yeah. Uh, if there's ever a layover, the man's just like in hand. Arrested, comes. yeah. <laughs> um, but his grandson has joined him because of three things. <laughs> uh, in February of this year, uh, there was an ra- there was an raid at an illegal club, mostly because it was like a club that was meant to have a capacity of ninety nine people. It had two hundred ninety nine people in there at the time it was like raided upon, uh, um, and he was he was discovered there in Madrid with what has been described as a stupid amount of pink cocaine on him. So the new hot drug, pink cocaine, it's like pink sauce, I guess. Um, piece of information number two on Christmas. December 25th last year. Yeah, okay. uh, He had a knife fight with someone outside (laughs) of a club in Madrid. Well, yeah, for all the pink... As you do when you take so much pink cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) Where's my knife? Oh, God. I hate that I know that pink cocaine's real. I know, right? so stupid. Sounds like something like a show. It sounds something fake, but yeah, no. Like NCIS with makeup or... Yeah, yeah. Um, Then, previous to this, in July 2022... He uh, fled an illegal opium club after a shootout was happening. That's like, so <laughs> fucking an, sick. An opium club like in like in China in yeah. 1898 or? <laughs> no, Madrid 2022. <laughs> Historical reenactment opium club. Absolutely. Yeah. What a king. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe literally. <laughs> yeah. He's like, um, if I understand it correctly, he's fourth in line for the throne. That's sick. Yeah. I wonder what Francisco Franco would think uh, if he saw this, you know? It seemed like such a nice young man, put him in power, and then... Oh, yeah. He'd be turning in his grave, right? Oh, absolutely. Good, yeah, make him king. (laughs) (laughs) The anti-fascist position is make this fucking Jason Statham-ass, like, crank character. (laughs) You say that, but he does look like Michael Sarah with black hair. (laughs) (laughs) That's even cooler. (laughs) Who is this guy again? Um, What's his name again? I've forgotten. Uh, Juan Carlos' first grandson. I've I've genuinely forgotten his name. Oh, God. Why didn't I write that down? Why does he also kind of remind me of, like, the like Italian trap like drug rappers, the yes. like mafia rappers, yeah, 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 which like we featured the, on the show before. The, the people who would be like, "My money, real Berlusconi or whatever." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd that's... be saying that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> my money, real Berlusconi. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us back to Berlin because I want to talk about some local bullshit. Okay, we went. You know, we had too much of the Spanish sun. Yeah. And uh, we're back. We're back where it matters. We're back in Berlin City. Yeah. Greatest city in the world, baby. Absolutely. I run Berlin, you know. <laughs> However, new government, which I believe is a green CDU government in this particular Keats, which I want to say is Charlottenburg, um, have shut down the uh, uh, Thai Markt for oh, like, the yeah. dumbest reasons. Thai Park, yeah. Yeah, I used, yeah. Yeah, I used to live around that, around, 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 around that them parks. That is right? Uh, Vilmersdorf. Vilmersdorf, okay. Yeah. Uh, Schottenburg Vilmersdorf is the, is the whole Bezirk. So there's a wonderful, wonderful interview with the Green politician who's, like, heading this, um, who basically makes the point of, like, oh, it's called a Stasenmarkt, but it's in a park, so we had to shut it down, is basically their whole reasoning for it. That is the m- most German thing I've ever heard of yeah. in my entire <laughs> fucking life. <laughs> Oh, God. And, uh, um, yeah, there's been a lot of accusations of just uh, uh, racism in general. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I uh, I wouldn't be surprised in Charlottenburg Vilmersdorf if that were the case. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very funny area, too, because it's one that then kind of has that, like, yeah, I think that then that green-black... Uh, yeah, coming, baby. It's happening. Yeah, um, that's definitely the most perfect Bitsyux vibe of it, mm. where it is, like, pretty bouge but everyone wants to pretend that they live in like a small village <laughs> like yeah. it is very like like you still have like the corner stores that have like specialty things like more so than other areas but they're all bio 
yeah. you know, or like whatever organic or whatever. Or like a little French bakery. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, does this French bakery really need to be here? <laughs> like it's a little too French. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's 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 like very fake yeah. in a way. Like it's not like like don't get me wrong. There's plenty of like French bakeries in Berlin that are like legitimate and good. Maybe not like a lot, but there are a couple. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. But I feel that then it's always like there's just like a store that's like, don't get me wrong, there could be a shitty version of this in like Kreuzberg and I would buy into it and it would rock. They'll just be called like Mediterranean Laden <laughs> and it would have everything that you need. But then in Charlottenburg Wilmersdorf, the same thing would be just called like Mediterranean Laden or whatever. And it would just be like a really bouge thing that just sells like three cheese sorts and like olives and yeah. then just like a bunch of like little grocery things and that's what it is like i want the i want the the you know the misspelled mediterranean laden it's so hard to spell mediterranean <laughs> it is yeah i want that i want it you know where it's just you know it's just a clusterfuck of like is this you know middle eastern turkish or greek we don't yeah. know we love it i want that store i yeah i mean the- there was also weirdly though like like an arogita like in my neighborhood yeah, I do love that uh, tradition you find in Germany, you find in other places in Europe, of just, like, immigrants lying about what nationality they are with the restaurant they yeah. start. All the, like, Asian places that sell, like, sushi and chow mein and be like, yeah, they're Vietnamese. Or, like... Oh, the best is, like, Albanian pizza places, Greek pizza places, Turkish yes. pizza, pizza places. The Turkish pizza, like, Turkish with, like, Italian flag colors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, is so common. We've got a Turkish-Mexican place. Uh, that rocks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. There is... There it's is, like... some suchuk nachos there. <laughs> oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. There is such actually. a... just. There is just... I mean, like, as, you know, someone of, of, of half-Balkan greatness. <laughs> there, and And... And yeah, the fact that my dad being a Greek dude who made a pizza place is like one yeah. of the best. Yeah. It's one of the best fucking just you're like. You're and you're American and you're thinking like, oh, those silly Germans. Nah, you fucking did it too. Absolutely. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's just, it's so, and it's the funny th- funniest thing too because my dad like, because he was in like the restaurant thing. I mean, his, his, his attempt to do his own pizza place failed pretty quickly, but he, uh, <laughs> you know. No, my dad. My dad's a really good cook. He just is really bad with business decisions. <laughs> you know, as it, you know, true, true <laughs> Greek, true Greek uh, 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 tradition. So some, someone in the nineties been like, "Oh man, thanks for the pie. How much do I owe you? Fifty? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's the pizza cost? <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, like just all like it's just so funny too because like my dad just is like, "Oh yeah, you know, like you know, all the Italian restaurants are owned by Greeks." And I'm like, what do you mean? And then I come to Berlin, and I'm like, oh, yeah, all the Italian restaurants are pretty much owned by Albanians, Turks, and Greeks. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, yeah, it is a it is a, it is is a, a truth of the world, and I'm fully here to support it. And it's a, you know what? Like, dupe the Germans. Yeah. Like, yeah, do it forever. Like, we're, also, we're also having the incentive now because uh, um, Maloney's government is now doing these, like, authentic food cops that she's got planned where you have to Oh, yeah, dumb as shit ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, yeah. like, carbonara is an American thing. Pizza, like, was the thing that also the U.S. brought over after World War II. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's that phenomenal FT article. Yeah, yeah, pizza is Italian. The reason everyone eats it is... because the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, like, exactly. Halloween is an Irish holiday. The reason everyone celebrates America, it. America, baby. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, That's the thing, too, that always bugs me, you know, of when Italians always have to be, like... Like, when I just... I, cause I, you know how, how little I care about, like, being... Italian, quote unquote, authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mexico. And they're just like they, they just like like immediately just like like the shitty ones just like lay into me and was like, do you know how little I care? Like I'm so not invested in this. But this, this is the new, this is the new grift you have. Is like okay, Italy's trying to like crack down on like what is and isn't Italian food. Croatia, Albania, San Marino, you need to get in there, issue licenses, and be like, no, this is authentic Croatian cuisine with my uh, um fucking kebab pizza in the fucking arctic circle part of sweden oh right? hell yeah let's yeah. go baby oh that i with yeah where it's like where it's like duna and pomace on a pizza yeah uh speaking of duna and pomace we should probably zero in on to berlin instead yes. of just talking about food because of the thai park thing but yes the thai park thing though uh is there any I like I've been seeing things of like people being like, oh, save Thai, Thai Park. But is there any like organized action? I, I do not think so. OK, nothing that will like. OK, so we can't shout out anything. No, just like go throw a tomato at your local 
you know, CDU office. Just spray paint the local Green Party office. Yeah. yeah. You know, for something or other. Like yeah, this. Yeah. Or There's one a lot of other things. things. Yeah. yeah. Gl- this is glue yourself to the street, I think, seems to be one of the popular things that Germans really hate. So. Yeah. Oh, God, they're so pissed. They're so mad about that. <laughs> Terrorismus. <laughs> yeah. <I love> it. <laughs> Did you see the thing that, like, the, 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 the beat set headline yesterday or today that was like, it was like 71 arrests, 71 people let go. Go. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> they should all be hung. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, they're so horny for death. Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah, no, because this is something I predicted very, very early on in in, in Cornish Beatty. Like, when we were doing episodes in fucking 2019, you come for the cars, Germany is suddenly going to start <laughs> baring its teeth. This is big car country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that we like that we took that 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 bit to get into Berlin mood of the silliness <laughs> of the city because now I think that it's I think it's a good transition over to um, the meat and potatoes yeah. of the episode of you know Berlin. I was going to say past, present, future, but neither present nor future. I guess maybe a little bit of present. Yeah, a little bit of present. No future. Well, maybe a little bit of future, too. Berlin past, present, future. Yeah. Uh, yeah fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I said, it was right. Yeah. Yeah, because um, this episode is coming out May 1st. Yes. Uh, which is a holiday in Germany. Um, woo Yeah, right? Um, I, I keep getting confused with Frauentag, and I'm surprised that the rest of Germany has this day off, but, like, no, we're the ones that only do Frauentag. Um... Yeah, so it's a holiday. Public to be holiday very Germany. fair, the rest of Germany may hate women. Yeah. So, like... <laughs> what was the one that I had recently of, like... May- like, statistically, of just, like, when you see things of, like, income inequality between East and West Germany, you're like, oh, yeah, m- maybe maybe East Germany was, like, maybe not the worst at certain things. Uh, yeah, they give money the, to women, mostly, yeah. is, is the thing. The... Um, was that book better sex under socialism better sex under socialism yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, even the gdr museum they have an exhibition there about how uh like a like a little plaque there about how uh their statistics women had more and 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 more more satisfied with sex in uh east germany than in the west you hear that ladies was that like they had more economic freedom therefore they weren't tied to yeah men who you have a country with a constitutional right to an apartment you know the government is required to provide you with housing so you're with some asshole like well fuck him yeah, yeah move to a different city move to a different place whatever He's got a trash dick game <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely just a small town yeah, get girl. your own place and fuck like crazy you know yeah yeah born uh, and raised in wherever the hell like size is from <laughs> <laughs> um yeah because okay so this is may 1st public holiday and we want to talk a little bit about may 1st um around berlin around yeah berlin, yeah and just yeah, why we have Nathaniel on. Can I say something terrible about May Day? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go I, for I really it. like May Day. Really yeah. my favorite day of the year. But a terrible fact about May Day is it actually became a public holiday in 1933. Yeah, the fact that we have the day off is, uh, that's Adolf Hitler uh, for you. And the reason is, it was for yeah. bad reasons, Hitler came to power, was trying to destroy the workers' movement, and so wanted to offer the workers something like, hey, you don't need your unions anymore. Uh, we're going to give you your own holiday, National Day of Labor, they called it. The very next day, Destroyed all the unions, occupied yeah. their headquarters. Yeah. But that's the reason we're one of the few countries in the world that still has those as a public holiday. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like... Yeah, sorry to start with it. No, no, that's fine. Because ba- it just sounds like the... the I'm going to give you $100 to fuck off me. Yeah. <laughs> basically what he did there. I mean, there was a, a bunch of concessions from the... Hitler government that were pretty much exactly that. I'm just like, I will literally give you $100 to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And then I will take over every single aspect of whatever it is that take you had. Back. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I guess like actually maybe the East West thing isn't the worst place to start off then because then if this that I did not even actually know that then May Day was a product of the Third Reich. The, the Third Reich. Mm. And then, you know, we then end up after this with Berlin being a divided city that i think everyone is very aware of yeah and um one of the biggest attitudes that then you see that then's very different with may day in this city is and i believe we've maybe talked about this on the show before but we were it's always a good thing to kind of hash on like 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 uh, uh to to bring up again is the like ideological differences of this day particularly between the two parts of the city where, like, it is very funny that then, you know, 
I think the average person associates Berlin May Day with chaos one way or another, whether you view it as uh, the old fashioned way of breaking shit and, you know, you know, lighting a bank on fire or whatever, yeah. you know, tomfoolery you wish to get into that day. Facts we don't legally condone. Yeah. <laughs> or in the ways that that's like transformed itself, you know, into recently with the. Yeah. Um, now it's no longer landlords and uh, no longer banks. It's mostly yeah. the mega landlords. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or um, like I think or. You know, maybe some people view it from like a touristic standpoint of like, oh, Berlin, crazy parties on a, mm. you know, but it's still like a a lively atmosphere regardless. But then also like at the same time, too, of that was just like a much different celebration. <laughs> In like the East, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because when yeah, it was like yeah. very orderly, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, and maybe people can, uh, Nathaniel can uh, talk a bit more about this, but I May 1st in East Germany as well as East Berlin struck me as something that was like parades orderly hey this is this is the day because it's it's i don't know what the equivalent is in like west germany but it's not this it's the day of just like we rule kind of thing effectively yeah like yeah big state uh, organized parades the image that always sticks with me is you have the free german youth you know the young people mm, in the FDL, state yeah, socialist yeah, yeah. party and they're uh, on their blue shirts and they're carrying gigantic portraits where they have like poles uh, so you can get this 12 square meter portrait and it's all the members of the Politburo I don't know like 16 <laughs> old dudes in suits and oh, yeah. like that doesn't feel like a party vibe to no, me you know you're yeah. carrying this thing like you're some Egyptian slave you know yeah uh, and there's just like Eric Hanukkah just like you know on your <laughs> I like and also like Talman would probably be the only one who is actually like dead who would have a portrait right yeah, I mean yeah. Marx and Engels. Oh, I sure, like them yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. also Rosa did like Luxembourg, Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And classics. Yeah, there. I mean, I I think that the imagery of but the like Willy Stoff and all these, you know, yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. Dry the true old heroes dudes. of German yeah. socialism. <laughs> do, you, do you like? I got the Willy Stoff ra- uh, banner this year. I'm getting mad action after me. <laughs> 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 <You kidding? laughs> Everyone wants to be with the Willy Stoff banner guy. <laughs> but yeah. Actually, I wrote for Ex Berliner, uh, an issue that's coming out in the summer, about 1973, Red Woodstock. Like, apparently the only time East Germany, they had about 10 days. They invited, like, 25,000 people from all over the world to show how cool East Germany was. You know, Fernsehturm is new, a bunch of new buildings. And and it was great. They said because everybody was watching, no repression, and the young people were out on the streets and dancing and drinking, and there was music. Lots of fucking, too. Lots of babies born. Uh, it was the World Festival of Students of Youth, 1973. Yeah. Yeah. But that was pretty much only once in the f- country's 40-year history. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's what a party. But, um, yeah, because, like, like, what would be... So, a vibe you get with May 1st, particularly outside of major cities. And, uh, like, not even, like, outside of Berlin. Like, I feel like you get this vibe in the... Um, what's now getting called the, like, burnt donut, the, like, CDU voting, like, ring around the center of the Oh, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, like, very reluctantly liking May 1st, or, like, not even liking it, just being kind of like, oh, this is... It's a holiday, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Like, if East Germany had, like, a day to celebrate, like, how productive the capitalist mode of production was, like, it's a phase that we all had to go through, but it's over now. But, you know, it did make some, like... Nifty doodads. <laughs> Let's give it up for the loom um, kind of shit. Of like that was a holiday, and everyone has been like, eh. <laughs> well, I think like one of the funniest things too of the East German. I mean, we can ob- the the bigger thing obviously to talk about. I think is in the West German, mm. the West Berlin transformation over the years of how that because East German was kind of like parade time, hooray! Here, look, and then one of the best ones ever is where they're like wheeling out the like robotrons. The Robotron, the uh, the the computer that 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 the GDR made. Okay, yeah. and they're just like on like these little like pulleyed like they're like 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 on these little wagons that are being pulled by like you know men and women of the party who are yeah. just like pulling these like 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 computers, being like, look at what we fucking made. <laughs> we fucking did it. <laughs> we did. This. They did a little parade for. I believe it is on May first too. Like. That is a um, that is a very tragic like progression of time because yeah you do this parade in the like fifties and you're wheeling out like these giant industrial machines for construction and mining extraction and also probably war tanks and stuff like that 
big spectacle things and then as technology progresses we're actually making things smaller and smaller and it's just like yo look at this fucking cell phone I made. yeah yeah could you imagine if like yeah if military like military parade with iphone yeah exactly <laughs> the fucking san Bernardino military parade yeah uh, um, yeah, so while the East is, you know, rolling out the Robotrons yeah. at, uh, at, at, at May Day. But East German stuff was great. I got, have you heard of uh, Superfest glass? Uh, East Germans came up with a way to make unbreakable glasses. I got some in my apartment. It's okay. like a normal beer glass. Oh, and what? And you knock it on the floor, and it bounces off like it's made out of plastic. That's phenomenal. Yeah, they, they were made like 40 years ago, and they just, I, I don't understand this stuff, but you spray something, potassium or something, on hot glass, yeah. and it fills up all the tiny little cracks uh, that like yeah. make glass break. And uh, they produce like millions of them, and they're all over the place. When you realize what they look like, you're like, holy shit, that's like a 35, 40-year-old glass that's it's never broken. Kicking, yeah. And uh, as soon as the reunification came, uh, some Western capitalists bought up the factory and like, there's no money to be made in uh, glass. Un- unbreakable glass, of course. Yeah. This is exactly the problem of capitalist means yeah. of production. Uh. Uh, is that you can have unbreakable glass with the superiority of just, you know, East German spray. <laughs> yeah, they're just <laughs> like, you have to put the, the, the coat of arms, the like protractor in the half. <laughs> like, Otherwise, the glass won't be unbreak. We just have to put yeah, the bottom. Yeah. It's like, well, we have to get rid of this then. <laughs> It's like 25% more expensive than normal glass, too. Yeah, But then you'd never have to buy another glass never again. Never buy another yeah, glass yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's a terrible business model. Nobody yeah. knows no. that. That was the same with, like, one of those uh, uh, in that period of reunification of, like, it was the New York Times that reported it. It's, like, in their archives and stuff. People in, I want to say mecklenburg vorpommern uh, there was a publisher out there that just, like, burnt all its books after it had been bought by, like, a, a Western company. And it wasn't, like, you know theory or historical materialist understanding of history or anything. There was like romance novels and it's like you can still read these. <laughs> like I don't understand. Like it was like stories of like a young boy meeting a dragon and shit and it's like nah nah put it on the fire. <laughs> it's like God, yeah the Thank yeah. God they kept all the apartments though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to turn those all down too but Yeah, but what if we bought all the books but then never made another new book ever again? <laughs> um Anyway, but yes, you're right. The 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 West, I think, is a bit more um, popping. It's a bit more popping, and um, literally uh, and figuratively. Sorry, I want to say one last point. You can find a lot of videos online. Like every so often, whenever there's like a lull in the news, DW or something like that, or any of the national broadcasters will do the video of just like we showed a bunch of East Germans like East German products, and we asked them what they thought, and a lot of them will always just be like. Yeah, this is this is the ra- the electric razor I still have. It was like made in the forties and it still <laughs> works. Kind of shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, I prefer this brand. Is like, and then it will just cut to some guy born in like Wuppertal being like, "Ostalgie is out of control. <laughs> they must be stopped." <laughs> How dare this old man from Brandenburg like his razor? <laughs> um, yeah. It was a federal holiday still in West Germany too. Yeah, it was both. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the, after the war, you kind of inherited the state holiday. Nobody was gonna dare to get rid of it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's just it's just so very interesting that then it's 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 kind of this like like, you know, a city that then is literally at the cusp of, you know, capitalism and whatever Soviet style of socialism. Yeah. Um, and that this holiday, which is its roots, obviously go back to, you know, the the Haymarket uh Riots, R- riots yes. and whatnot, but yeah. yeah, I mean, and then German history still is, and then like a labor holiday, then carrying over to then both East and West Germany or East and West Berlin too, especially um, had a very, and it's very interesting too because when you see like, I feel that whenever you see old videos, um, like archive footage of people in Berlin being interviewed, particularly about like topics along the lines of like capitalism, there's always been a pretty general. I don't want to say like for full blown like critique, but I feel that the average person who like lives in Berlin, no matter who they like vote for, would kind of even be like, oh, well, yeah, no, because we have like the Sozialmarktwirtschaft and we have these aspects of like the social state, Germany is still like it is like kind of like this weird exception where they still like respect like labor mm. and whatnot to some degree, you know, like no one in any party is going to tell you they fucking hate workers in Germany. Yeah, you know. there's been consequences of that, like why there was at one point Walmarts in this country and then they all kind of like shut down when like the Americans realized 
what German labor law looked like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, down at Neukölln. Yeah, we yeah. have that big supermarket that used to be a Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I read this study. They said part of it was, uh, you know, when you walk into a Walmart in the United States and there's always that old person there like, hello, welcome to Walmart. And apparently they tried that here. And and the Germans, Germans hated it. Somebody yeah. say, a stranger says hello to you and they would like just immediately turn around and never yeah. come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the main reason was just, the, the yeah, like you said, the business model didn't yeah, work yeah. with uh, paying yeah. living wages. But uh, but also also the greeters uh, terrified people. Yeah. But, yeah, so how did then the city then from the side that then was apparently supposed to be the, you know, the capitalist side yeah. take to then yeah, May well, Day? West Berlin was always ruled by the SPD, you know, yeah. so it was a socialist, I mean, a party that had socialist in its name, at least. And they always had their own big demonstrations, uh, the trade unions, and, and this still goes on, too. Like, if mm. you go on May 1st at 10 a.m., I forget where it is, I think it's in mid- I, I go every year, but I go because I'm like a super dogmatic communist and uh, have to go <laughs> where the trade unions are, but I really wouldn't recommend it to people. I mean, okay, last year, then what happens is the you trade go unions... For the, for the, you go for the tradition. I, <laughs> And I go uh, to attack the people who are organizing it. And last year, they invited, they always invite the mayor, and the mayor is usually a social democrat. And so it's like a bunch of public sector workers, and they want you know better wages and better conditions. And it's their fucking boss, the person who's refusing to give them better wages and better conditions, is at, is at the front carrying the banner. Yeah. And so last year, uh, Giffey was supposed oh, to give God, the speech. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you remember uh, yeah. somebody oh, from the yeah. front row, like threw an egg. Yep. And we were all in the audience. There was I don't know. It, it's like a, it's a tiny demonstration too. You know, the unions have so many members in Berlin, but like, who the fuck wants to go at 10 a.m. on a holiday? I feel like the only reason they put that demonstration at 10 is like they really don't want people to come there. <laughs> so it was all a bunch of dogmatic communists like me. A couple hundred of us we were right up at the stage and we were all chanting at Giffey, yelling, and yeah. uh, she couldn't speak. Yeah, and so. That was actually great. Yeah, that was one of the <laughs> funnest demonstrations of last year. Was uh, and we, we made it onto the Tagus show, ruined the mayor's day. Yeah. So so I'm uh, and, and this year apparently I don't know I've got that baby at home. I'm not like super up on the news, but apparently they invited Kai fucking Wigner. Yeah. That's Sometimes right, baby. <laughs> at a union demonstration, and so we'll see. Hopefully, I like I don't know what they're gonna I do. Understand. Maybe they'll have like oh, much damn. bigger loudspeakers. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be year. fucking cooking omelets at the uh, at the at the <laughs> at, the, at the demo, baby. Hello, Loita. I understand hard labor. I moderated a lot of Facebook groups. <laughs> <laughs> That's work. Yeah. And, you know, I'm paid. <laughs> yeah. My money's where's good. Where's my parade? <laughs> yeah, where's my parade? I'm one of you, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so it is, it, is, it is very funny seeing that then, like, it is, like, all right, the SPD... Like, to be fair, Giffy is like an aberration. She's like an oh, SPD yeah. member who really does not want to be one. Yeah, like, yeah. She hates. I <laughs> I legitimately at this point think that she was just a CDU plant for how easy <laughs> for how easy she was just like because she was so adamant that she was like no it's my God given right to be mayor of Berlin yeah. and then this last election was like oh yeah I lost <laughs> like put no, yeah. no 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 she put up no fight whatsoever to give it over to the CDU but um yeah I I, I do find it very interesting how then even like okay yeah the the, the Berlin SPD is not only Francisca Giffey. No. But that there is like there is this one thing that they do try to see as like this like unifying factor of like, see, yeah, like we're still socialists. And that's been a thing that they've done in this city for yeah, for for quite some time. Like when how did like that was that directly then after like just re- like what, nineteen forty nine, I guess, is when, you know, West Germany and East Germany are then officially Divided up his countries with their own... Yeah, 48, politi- 49. And uh, SPD hasn't been in power the entire time that uh, West Berlin was its own thing, but uh, most of the time. And most of the time since reunification, too. And, uh, yeah, so it was starting in... I think the first time was in 1968. You know, you have this big youth radicalization. And the big topic is, you know, the Vietnam War. And uh, the SPD and the trade union bureaucrats in West Berlin, West Germany, are like super pro-Vietnam War. That's the first time I found that then you have all these young people, these leftists, they have their own media demonstration. They go to Neukölln, they go to Karl Marx Platz, and it's huge. There's like, I don't know, 40,000 people or something. And that kind of gets this tradition starting of having, I mean, whatever leftists happen to be dominant that year they organized their own uh radical demonstration independent of the trade unions and independent of the spd and uh, that's been going on 
like since yeah, 87, 88, uh, we've got the Revolutionary Media Demonstration that's this year mm. in Bodenstrasse. Yeah, yeah, we're starting in Neukölln. Yeah. yeah, and that's, I'm trying to think, like, I should have done the math in my head before we started, but 35 years, I think, is that? Mm. Which is, which I always think is weird because, like, I mean, for me, that's, like, exactly what Berlin is about, is that we're going to have this day of, like, rioting and setting things on fire and then we plan it like a year in advance, you know? Hey, uh, it's like nine months to that riot. We got to make sure we got <laughs> porta potties. <laughs> we got to start some subcommittees here. You know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. riots don't organize themselves, people. <laughs> yeah, it is It is very, like, the, one of the things that I've always enjoyed, um, I mean, I, I, I still need to know where I need to go for this May Day because I have, did not participate the last couple of years. But, um, yeah, it is always something that then, regardless of, I mean, regardless of where you end up, I guess, you're going to just kind of, like, you can very easily stumble upon mm. um, some level of activity on May Day. And even, like, today, too, it's, like, there's still, like, I, I accidentally ended up at, like, the, like, anti-Deutsch one a few years ago with Rob. Yeah. <laughs> what were they demonstrating they for? They were demonstrating around, uh, around, around Friedrich Hein. And it was just like Rob was just like, "Hey, do you want to go to this de- this May this May Day like demo?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." And then we're like, you know, I'm going around and then hearing the chants of like, you know, um, uh, anti 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 nationalist. I'm like, "Oh no!" Like we're in an anti Deutsch one. Oh. <laughs> like we've 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 weirdly we've weirdly found like they they weirdly change all the chants to just like not be anti capitalist anymore, but they're just like very strictly like anti-german and uh yeah and then they like go they they went around the like i forget which which uh squad it is that has all the like uh stop uh uh al quds day and whatnot (laughs) like that was there yeah it's it's a it's the one that's somewhere around here in forget sign right but yeah. yeah it was a very it was a very odd uh that just also strikes as like a very thing that I'd imagine a lot of people listening from other countries might roll their eyes at, at being kind of very German left is like, oh yeah, there's like a di- there's a million different Mayday demos of various. Yeah, pick the right one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's also the one, the bicycle demonstration that's been going on for a few years. The, the one what's it called? My Gruni? Yes, yeah, it's in Grunewald, doesn't it? No, it, it goes to Grunewald. It and goes the idea to is, Grunewald. Yeah, you're you're visiting the people in the villas and you're expressing your oh. It's like, but it's that's like the friendly demonstration. They yeah. they've got a very satirical vibe they're trying to not take mayday as seriously I, i've had some people in some bars yell at me that that's like an op <laughs> that's like <laughs> to get to get the angry communists out of the center of the city. Um, yeah I would, oh uh, no for sure actually it, like yeah it feels like like if you want to be part of mayday berlin but you don't really want to risk anything yeah. you know don't want to risk a confrontation with the cops maybe get hurt yeah, just go to Grunewald. It's nice and safe. But yeah. it, the the funny thing is, it doesn't work though because like last yeah. year, the year before, I remember the Beit Set had a big article about how uh, Grunewald demonstration that's anti-Semitic. You know, because yeah. you're, like, <laughs> probably some of the people could, in those villas there could be a Jewish person that lives out here. <laughs> well, you know, because like, statistically, probably yeah. is, it's always the classic German thing of like. I must defend anti-Semitism. I must stop anti-Semitism from happening. And there's uh, something really anti-Semitic. Just be like, you can't go there. That's the rich neighborhood. Where the? Ju- oh no! <laughs> stop it! Stop talking. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 projection of that's so clear because I mean you have then also to like Michael Müller, the <laughs> former the former. You can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it because, because it would it would be the second time that the Jews had their <laughs> their property oh, taken right. from them. It's like. Wait, what makes you think that rich people are like you know that the oh, that the dude, property yeah. holding class are all Jews? Like, oh goodness! Oh, but the you know, thing- that's what's so funny about it: these campaigns against you know these fake accusations of anti-Semitism is that you're letting a lot of actual anti-Semitism yeah. just kind of go by and go. Yeah. The fucking mayor of Berlin saying, "Hey, Berliners, are you worried about rising rents? Well, you know who's uh, to blame for that? The Jews. You know, if we were to expo- <laughs> if we were to do anything against rising rents, that would really go against the interests of the Jewish people." Yeah. And, and then, like, like, holy shit, he didn't even get in trouble for that. Twenty yeah. articles in Die Welt being like, "You know, what's really anti-Semitic? Gluing your hand to the the pavement." Yeah. <laughs> you need to, um, yeah. The 
Isn't there also like the thing that happens on May Day that is also kind of like very sponsored by the police? Is like My Fest? My Fest. Yeah, well, My Fest is really contradictory because it started yeah. in 2004 and it's always been presented as Anwohner, you know, uh, neighbors and shop owners and stuff, just, just having their own little street festival to. Uh, I mean, originally they said they wanted to. to protest against all the violence all the rioting that was going on there and then like the very first year journalists figured out like wait a minute this street fe- this is being sponsored like half by the city government and half by the berlin police which <laughs> is <laughs> not like their mo yeah. and but it, it always has been it's been a bit of both like the, the police put it there and they want to just occupy the space and i was surprised too there were a couple of years where we tried to take the revolutionary media demonstration through my fest and it is impossible to demonstrate yeah. through this big mass of drunken people. Like, even if you're really trying to keep in a formation, people are just coming at you from all sides, and you lose sight of the flags ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. it's actually been effective in it its own works. way. But then, I don't know. There's also left wing people that sometimes organize some of the stages. There have been years where, like, a ton of people have come from my fest to the revolutionary demonstration. There were years. I don't know, the CDU or the FTB or something were saying, oh, yes, we should ban uh, my fest. It's too dangerous. And uh, yeah. it's like, but that's that's your thing. You yeah. guys, you guys yeah. put that there. That's well, like when a bunch of people in like... Do you uh, see that my fest we can do entryism in? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what's happening, I guess, because like it's containment rather than just like... like the, the more egregious thing would just be like, let's celebrate... Uh, I don't know the Bundeswehr, whatever. Like on May Day, <laughs> or, like the CD, the CSU sponsored. Like, isn't it great to be Catholic yeah. festival? Um, no, because like the the yeah the celibacy and like you know <laughs> no drugs uh, <laughs> no drugs fest. Yeah, because it's, it's but like, as much beer as you want because oh, that yeah. yeah, and then just turns into Oktoberfest. Yeah, <laughs> just like for one day. But what I what I've always noticed at my fest is like. Uh, I remember at least one year we ended the revolution. I made a demonstration and nothing really happened. Like it doesn't kick off necessarily. No. Every, it really depends on the police. I think years where the police, uh, well, the police up. are doing the keg stands. And <laughs> Wait, no, but uh, those How years them, but you yeah. go to uh, my fest and you see that's where people are throwing bottles and rocks. And yeah, stuff because like if you want to set a sign against violence, like great, let's bring a hundred thousand people out onto the street and give them beer and glass bottles all day and yeah. see what happens. You know, I always feel like whenever I hear CDU people talking about like oh we need to stop my fest or like oh it's too dangerous it's kind of like when an advert for cereal says like oh mom doesn't approve it's too sugary <laughs> 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 it's, it's ever just trying to like reese's for breakfast reese's for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> my fest to the center of Berlin. <laughs> um yeah but yeah like yeah the, like genuinely revolutionary organizations will just like have stands there and stuff and it's like eh. yeah but they always my impression is they always put it in the place that like people do want to parade through, like or do want to march through. Like they just oh yeah yeah it's a it's an occupation. It's yeah. uh that's how it was designed because originally the my Fe- sorry originally revolutionary May Day demonstration was registered with the authorities. You know you have to register your demonstration, and they'd registered it for the next hundred years or something, and they actually <laughs> changed the law that said that the city would get first dibs on anything, and so they used that to take away the registration for all the future revolutionary May Days and say, no, no, there's there's already something here. This is already taken. Yeah, that's that's totally... And I don't think anybody... A lot of people probably even organizing MyFest didn't really realize how they were being used by the police mm-hmm. like that, and certainly not the 100,000 people on the streets. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because you have to assume just the, the vast, vast majority of people are not paying as much attention to this kind of stuff. They're They're getting on with their lives in other... More fun ways, <laughs> watching too hot to handle Germany or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this year though, Revolutionary Media is uh, starting in Neukölln and going to Kreuzberg. I, f- I mm. think it's going to end at Oranienplatz. Yeah, it goes up from, uh, I believe, Hermannplatz, and then kind of goes up a very weird way, yeah, and then ends up looping back around. Yeah, like yeah, it's fun. The episode has come out after that's happened, but you know, if you <laughs> it would have gone that way. Well, then. I mean, if you hear this very early in the morning, I guess go to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder what's going to happen. I remember last year we were super, super, super disciplined. I was linked arms with the people next to me probably for four hours. You know, not moving like uh, like yeah. just a Roman centurion uh, thing, <laughs> Margie, because we'd gotten attacked by the police the year before. Yeah. yeah. We were super prepared. 
And last year, nothing happened. They just they were you know glaring at us and stuff. There were thousands of police along our route, was but they didn't do anything, and we we yeah. made it all the way to the end. Was it twenty? Maybe we impressed them. Maybe we scared them with our uh, tight formation. Yeah. they were like, was "Damn, it? Roman centurion!" It's like <laughs> we, we can't, we can't, we can't keep up because they're all so nerds who think that that shit's so cool, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. damn, yeah, like." A perfect, a perfect phalanx, like <laughs> phalanx. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You confront them with the fact that, like, actually, those white marble statues were painted, and they're just like, no, no. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, but the the was it the year was twenty twenty or twenty twenty one that was like May Day happened, pretty much just after the mutant decal was overturned, mm. and that was like, I was I, I was. Mine and my kid, I think. So I guess it must have been 2021. But then, like, I took the train just to Herman Platz to just, like, pop my head out and be like, Yo, what's going on? And it was, like, pots and pans being banged and, like, shit being thrown. Everyone was like, all right, yeah, respect. And I just pop back into the train. <laughs> You're like, I'm going home. I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have the energy yeah. for this. That was the year they stopped us after, like, three blocks, uh, 700 yeah. meters in. And they said it was because... Uh, not enough people were wearing masks. And that's after yes. 30 years of attacking the demonstration because they say too, too many, many people were wearing masks. masks. <laughs> and now they're back. Now you're not allowed to wear a mask in, again. Uh, so now it's back to the original. Now they're going to beat us up for too few masks. Or too, yeah. too many? No, too few. Yeah, too yeah. few. Too many was the one year. No, wait. Too, no, now it's too many. <laughs> now it's too no, many Now masks. they're going to beat us for too many masks. Yes, yeah, because the, they've lifted the corona restrictions now. So now, now masks bad and you can't wear them. Hmm. Uh, for 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 Monday, um, unless you're a police officer, they they wear masks. Oh, absolutely! So yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, they have numbers, so that that's rule. how the state gets around that one. Yeah. Is that just give them a number on their back, right? And also, a lot of them are just from out of town. They don't know how things work. <laughs> like, oh my god, the best one is that then the ones that then are out of town. Uh, the ones we ship over from like yeah Austin yeah. And, uh, um, I've heard stories of people like confusing them. Like, uh, particularly ones from, like, Baden-Württemberg and whatnot, especially, like, when certain protests will go down, like, really small alleyways. They've gotten really good at just, like, tricking them. Okay. And, like, the the protests will then, like, disperse, like, at certain, like, like spots in, like... Like, Phoenix Town's a really good example because yeah. there's, like, a lot of, like... Um, so there was one year where, like, the revolutionary women's protest was, like, the one that then's the day before, mm. uh, that like, the night before the 8th of March... Okay. There's like the there's like the revolutionary women's protest, and one year they got the cops like near like there's like a fire station near Baghain, mm-hmm. and but then near Baghain there's like all these sh- small alleyways and everything where everyone can just kind of like disperse and sneak out. Yeah. So they like they kind of broke the protest up there, but then didn't realize that they broke it up in a perfect area for everyone to just like get away, who <laughs> needed to like run away and whatnot. So it's been really fun to see like the actions of like or like there was. Um, uh, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be self-incriminating myself. Never mind. <laughs> I can't. I do remember one of the years there was a scandal because a bunch of the like cops that they flew in from NRV or Hesse. I, can't, I think it was Hesse because they, they were like people who usually patrol Frankfurt uh, um, were just treating the whole thing like a holiday. And they got into trouble for just like kind of oh, being yeah. drunk <laughs> and in hot tubs and stuff like that. Because, yeah, they were having like parties and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that's the thing, too, that then has also really changed. I mean, it well, like the police presence thing in Berlin is also a very interesting one because it's a city that then portrays itself as like, oh, yeah, look, we're so open and friendly and this and that and that. And then it's like first of May. It's like we will bring in every officer from around this, this country yeah. to make sure that like a single leftist is not left unturned and beaten. <laughs> Like it is, it is such a very. In, I mean, it's like that up to ten thousand cops uh, some years. Yeah, yeah, and that really is is a. I mean, that's a relatively newer thing, isn't it? I think it's been going up for twenty, thirty years. Like as long All as right, it's been around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, every year just a couple more. <laughs> and the, yeah, the the amount of cops in general is also pretty alarming. I think for me, someone moved here. Like, okay, Ireland, the police will just kind of. Uh, most times just kind of give you a stern talk- talking to or whatever. They're getting more violent now. Um, and then you go to the UK, which has a very, like, police state kind of thing. And then you come here. And the thing that surprised me the most was, like, the, the small mini buses filled with, like, a small platoon of cops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. In the UK, you would never really see more than, like, two together. Unless, like, a situation was already going down. Not just, like, as a patrol. 
like just going around. Yeah, like a police occupation. It also really bothers me the aesthetics here. You know, they switched uh, from green uniforms that they had. Um, what was it? Maybe twenty years ago, they switched to like technically it's supposed to be dark blue, but like they're it looks just black. black uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. And like the country that went through denazification, and you've got a bunch of guys in masks and black uniforms with truncheons standing around. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of things that are the same, isn't there? Sl- it wasn't the slogan for the police in Berlin invented in. Nazi Germany as well. The like, we're there for you. Dein Freund und Helfer. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, like the one that ends with da or something. Oh, is it? Ah. No, it's uh, Dein Freund und Helfer. Okay, right. Or right. Um, what is it? What is the other? There is another slogan too. Might be the ordnance out now, actually. No, no, no. Yeah. But no, literally, it's. Uh, I think it's just like literally just says like Dein Freund und Helfer or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. Unless there is a different one, but mm. I think that that's the. I I'm always know. looking out for the ordnance out because I have dogs. <laughs> oh, the ordnance amp is so funny though. They're like, like, yeah, like I noticed it too when when I was when I was taking care of your dogs. Yeah, that when they like roll up on somewhere, dog owners just leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you start getting clued into the network of people who are like snitching on the ordnance amp to you. Like, oh yeah, they're 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 like literally, you'll just enter the park and like someone will approach you being like. Yeah, they're wearing like a red shirt today and gray khakis and stuff. There's a civilian ordnance out. There's like uh, plain clothes. Yeah. Oh wow! What the fuck is wrong with this country? <laughs> to catch you with your dog off lead. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a plain clothes ordnance out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They hide in bushes and shit. It's unreal. What a bunch of weirdos. Um, yes. And also, okay, the most unreal thing. What, did, uh, what, what, what like the most like unsexy job that exists? <laughs> you say that, but the most surreal thing I ever had, I experienced this by going into a Volvitz and going to the very back section where you get the, like very cheap toys for kids and stuff. There is an ordinance amp, like amped set of like, does your kid want to dress up as the ordinance amp? And it's like a high vis jacket and then like a little tiny notebook and pen, <laughs> 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 like and a hat. Yeah. No. You can Raise pretend to be. You're like eight year old can pretend to be a member of the Ordnung Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give out like parking tickets. Yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. This city's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying actually just the fact of kind of just going through Berlin as just a silly place that we all live in that has also history that goes with it. Yeah. And the thing that then I mean also I mean like we had Nathaniel on because you wrote a, a lovely book that I've I live in some of the areas that then also too. Uh, you know, we can thumb the pages through, which the thing I thought was very interesting, too, of that then is that you give a, an entire chapter towards like, you know, colonial, decolonial mm. Berlin, especially. And I, I live up in Vetting and there's been a lot of name changes of things where then which made well, my life like two. Yeah, but still made my life fucking difficult because my friend lives on one of these streets. And I'm just like and like walking over to my friends like, you know may have been quite stoned and i'm looking at my phone and i'm like the street names aren't right (laughs) and then to find out that then it's like oh okay it was for a very good reason oh i was just i was uh, worried that sentence was gonna end and that's how i became a member of the afd (laughs) (laughs) yeah i got so stoned that the the street names changed and it made me a reactionary (laughs) because the names for i think maybe one day didn't match Google Maps, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was updated. that was it. That was the bit that it took to to make me, you know, <laughs> welcome to Corner Spatey. You know, you're full. You know, you're uh, you're 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 uh, you're you're full blown. You know, funded by the Erasmus uh, Stiftung yeah. English <laughs> English Politics <laughs> Podcast. Um, God damn it! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, it's a very good uh, uh, chapter, but like, it does kind of. You mentioned like yeah, a lot of street changed, street names uh, changed. two, two, yeah. yeah. But then you, yeah, correctly pointed is only two, and then like and since they're in my neighborhood, I think it's a lot. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two streets, whoa. Woo. Um, but then like one of the really big ones still hasn't changed, right? It's still like German N word Street, right? Oh yeah, Emstra uh, was it Emstra? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they voted on changing that, and I mean it'll change eventually. You know, yeah. it, give them four or five years. It's just a lot of work to change out those street signs, you know. Uh, <laughs> you think it would just take five seconds or yeah. whatever, but no. Uh, you ask the people working at the offices there, and they say, "Nope, nope, it's way harder it's than you crazy. think." Crazy, yeah, um, yeah, because that's the that's the one that always gets me. Of just like, first of all, it, it's the one of the things I learned very quickly because of this when I found that out, I was like, "Well, I'm going to start saying the word carotten because that's 
much further from me accidentally saying a German. Yeah, slur. yeah. You with your like, yeah, you with your very all over the place German is like, I, I may accidentally I say a slur. I have to say Karatan. <laughs> yeah. I, I cannot distinguish O and O umlaut. Yes. Um, but then like the fact that that's isn't that the street where like they did the carving up of Africa, like the the yeah the uh, around the corner Wilhelmstrasse. Yeah. That's where the. Uh, Chancellery was. That's where yeah. Otto von Bismarck had his residence and office. And yeah, they had the uh, Berlin conference there. Yeah. And yeah, divided up Africa on a table. A lot of the borders you see today in Africa were picked uh, right here in Berlin. When was that? That was 18. Fuck. I should know this. Yeah, because like that's 1878, 1879. Yeah. And it's it's also no no wait wait I got it I got yeah. it 1884 1885 all right there yeah yes, there we go Whew. Uh, but then it is interesting you're like oh yeah they voted on so, so it should change any day now but like we are definitely living in the Berlin government that does not give a flying fuck about what you voted for uh, oh yeah 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 you know, it'll be like oh wait there's not enough <laughs> there's not enough street names with racial slurs <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys just just got off Facebook a uh, great new suggestion yeah Süd Südländerstraße yeah. coming the, to uh, you the city you had in their election program they said they wanted a Denkmal a monument for uh, German police who were you know killed in the line of duty or whatever and I was Wait, as a historian what? Thinking, what were they killed in the line of duty for yeah and I was like, thinking like we already had that like the, yeah. the Nazis put that up in like 1936 Mussolini was there like <laughs> is that what you're talking about you want that one maybe they want to pick the same spot yeah. too yeah, yeah. We have to hide our tracks a little bit. <laughs> I just find it like that is such a funny thing when like especially a city like Berlin tries to do such like a pro cop line because it doesn't really like work. Like they 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 really like don't understand like the aesthetics of like I mean maybe they do but like I think that they're like a little bit too like oh gosh don't people just want to become police and then like that that um that what was that ad like the like all cops are beautiful ad that was like just in like at alexanderplatz and it's like they like they get that people hate them but just no like no matter no matter how much effort in the world you can put into like changing that phrase into a into a pro cop thing (laughs) like it's 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 too embarrassing to see it because you got. I don't know. You got. There's no changing a cab away from its meaning or getting rid of. All it. cats are beautiful. I know. You <laughs> can't like the French say it. Like they haven't even yeah. translated it into French. They still just write a cab. It's like it, it's done. It's over. Yeah, it's not like, like it's not like A B A C. <laughs> <laughs> Your OTA. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because like the. The only successful like propaganda tactic I think I've ever seen in the city is the like the Instagram hot cops thing that they like. Did oh yeah. Movies. Yeah. 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 Well then the, she's, uh, she's also one of the spokesperson for bid. One of the weirdest things that you as a police officer is allowed to be like a, a model for bid. Yeah. Like that okay. seems like it would, you know, kind of cross over. They did like a video tour through a, a police precinct, like station thing in, um, I want to say Brandenburg or turning like one of the new, uh, uh, new States, uh, um, where like they accidentally walked into the changing room, oops, kind of like through their <laughs> video tour, and it's a lot of like cops just like like women in underwear, and it's like I think they took it down pretty quickly afterwards, but it was like on Instagram and stuff back when Instagram had just introduced video on like Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were really trying to like we're gonna get you to like the cops because some of them are kind of like fit, I guess. Um, yeah, this crazy was- place. But also, I feel like a lot of the like respect the cop stuff does strike as importing American grievance politics. Oh yeah, rather than like it's working over there, so we're just going to try it here, rather than this is coming from like a legit place. Because we talked about this in an episode ages ago about like comparing cop shows in Europe versus America, but like cop shows in Europe aren't very successful. What are successful are like detective shows where you have someone, like, trying to solve a case, but you don't have, like, procedurals or, like, cops on the street kind of shows like you do in the States. People don't, people don't, people don't like those here. They want people who solve murders. That's yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. They, want the, they, they want the sexy, you know, like, brainy type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disheveled. And in that one Austrian show, one of them's a dog. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Thomas R. Rex. Yeah. It's a huge <laughs> show. A- Italian-Austrian co-production. Where one of the literally it has like an anime opening because it's an Austrian show, but the theme song is 
uh, in English, kind of on... This is made in the 70s, and it's still kind of going, um, but now only in Italy. Commissario Rex. Uh, <laughs> 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 Not even lying. Um, yeah, because like the, the the theme song is like an anime because it's like very bad English, and it literally has like a woman singing. Find out when a dog's in control. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a threat. <laughs> it, it is. It's a cop dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought humans were brutal. <laughs> <laughs> this dog has no sense of morality. <laughs> like the the worst nightmare to a German speaking person is like this dog's a cop and he hasn't read count. <laughs> let's, see what, let's see what happens. <laughs> he has no guiding principles. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, how are we doing for time? Should I get into this uh, uh, wonderful piece by our boy Ulf? Um, yeah. I mean, we're at like an hour 15. We just kind of like randomly went all over the place with silly stuff in Berlin for ASMR, which I actually really appreciated, if that's okay. I mean, maybe yeah. we could hit up a little bit more on this. I mean, we've talked about the riots, I think, like exhaustingly before of like previous you know, episodes. I mean, that's just the thing that's existed in the Berlin. If you aren't, I mean, like, if you aren't, you know, keen to it, and like, mm. you know, or you aren't hip to the, you know, you know, whatever is going on in, in, in Berlin stuff. We have an episode way back where we talk about the riots mm. and the culture around that that started. We, we, we touched about it briefly with the MyFest stuff, about how that was an op. But, um, yeah, it got, <laughs> shit got pretty violent. It still gets pretty violent here. Uh, mm. depending on which which demonstration you go to. But um yeah, like I think that we can we can transition gears to, you know Oh, yeah. can I give some advice though? Oh, yeah. I just uh, if people are relatively new in the city, uh just wanna let people know that they shouldn't talk to fucking cops. A lot of people make oh, this yeah. mistake and the cops won't let you know that you don't have to talk to them. They'll be like, Oh, you have to talk to us. But like you have uh constitutional rights here all you need to tell the cops are your name and uh, basically like what's on your ID, your address. You have to tell them, yeah. and nothing else. And they'll make you all kinds of offers about like, talk to us and we'll let you go or something like that. And that's never true. No. Like, uh, if, if in German it's uh, "Ich verweigere die Aussage," I refuse to make a statement. And like, even if you want to talk to cops and tell your version of events. Do it later. You know, you, you'll yeah, have go a trial to, You can go to the police whatever. station if it's, yeah. like, actually something that you need to report on. But, like, don't yeah. do it while you're in custody. That's, like, that's just a, that's never going to work in your yeah. work out in your advantage. Sorry. Yeah. So, number one tip, anyway, for people going to Mayday. Don't oh, talk to yeah, cops. for sure. I uh, The thing also, too, is that then there's a lot of laws that people in Germany will tell you that they think are laws that are not laws. Don't believe them. <laughs> Again, yes, exactly. You don't even, even like, even if you do not have identification on you and you're stopped by the cops, you would need to pr- prove it, provide it within 48 hours at a police station. Mm-hmm. So if they try to get you in a, like, in a van or something to be like, oh, you gotta, you gotta come with us, you don't have ID, that's not a law. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, they will try to, like, do anything to fuck with you. So you're literally, yeah, exactly. The only thing that you have to provide is your name and I believe an address. Hmm. Yeah, and that's it. You don't have to like provide ID. Well, to randomly jarring shift of tone to a man who disagrees, who loves the cops, disagrees <laughs> with everything we've said so far. Yeah, editor in chief of Die Welt, Ulf Porchat, with his new piece. Well, not new. It's from uh, it's from February. Berlin. It's time for an adrenaline rush. You have to imagine Ulf didn't write this. He dictated it to his phone while driving his Porsche 911. That's right. Um, Berlin's re-election is a chance to vote out the disastrous left-left state government. With many examples, she has shown that beyond... Behind her modern image, there is nothing but backwardness and Philistin- Philistinism, referring to Berlin. As you bear with me, because this is translated, but anyway. So, Ulf has an extended metaphor throughout this entire piece, which is always dangerous for an opinion, opinion columnist to introduce an extended metaphor. Um, but here it is. How long is this piece, by the way? I feel Ulf is always very short. 
He is fairly sure. Yeah, yeah king. Don't, don't worry. The uh, king. The king reigns supreme. He is the. He's one of the worst writers, but he knows he's not good. He just, you know, he gets you in, gets you out real quick. You'll read some asinine bullshit that he probably didn't think of, you know, too too deeply himself either. I, I, and he's just collecting that check, and he's riding that fucking Porsche or Ferrari or the fuck he has. Porsche 911. That's his favorite. Yeah. Um, I had to check, but the last twenty. Opinion pieces he's written for like three Belt paragraphs have all mentioned Let's Sit Down and Ashley on. Hell yeah, he hates them. <laughs> he hates them so fucking much. Yeah, he has a fantasy of of running one of them into a pole. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you know the problem is that his Porsche is totaled. Not that he you know you know committed <laughs> vehicular manslaughter. Well, in his opinion, he didn't though. No, you exactly. Know, that's <laughs> Ordnung, you know. Yeah. Uh, Collateral yeah. damage. Yeah. <laughs> the act of God. Um, yeah, God being my Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to understand, Ulf reacts to cars the same way like a 1910 Siberian peasant acts to like seeing a radio for the first time. Like, oh, yeah. He's just like overwhelmed and like by the sight of cars and will do anything to defend them. But anyway, <clears throat> send a metaphor time. The big mouth uh, that Berlin flaunts and debates is that of an aging young professional who still lives with mom and dad. In this case, mom would be Bavaria, and dad will alternatively be Baden-Württemberg or Hesse. For decades, the city, which was initially divided and then reunited, thanks. Yeah, oh. thanks for the history lesson, <laughs> genius. <laughs> Didn't know that. Um, I love when they add these like little like like fucking Wikipedia entry things of like you know Berlin, you know uh, three point eight million, Berlin. yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the fucking old Porsche on TEDx talk. Um, the city has always been a magnet for transfer, for internal migration, uh, whose morbid splendor can only shine because there are wealthy, hardworking federal states that finance the city, which has become largely comfortable, fed up, and lacking in ambition. Uh, at this point, I'd like to remind people that Ulf is from Bavaria, a state that has been on uh, uh, um, like federal assistance longer than Berlin has been on it, but sure. Uh, skipping ahead, in 2022... Berlin received a good 3.6 billion euros from the state financial equalization, a similar amount the year before. But ingratitude towards the financiers is not the exception, but the but the rule. Bavaria, ugh, how uncool. He, <laughs> he says, just like, why isn't everyone my friend? I gave you 3.6 billion euros. Uh, the budget of Berlin is about 76 billion. It's, it's not a lot of money. Um, so... Carrying on, he describes politics in this city. The political scene, however, still reflects the narrowness of the remaining original Berliners, unlike these dynamic new people from the states I like. Yeah, the like the the, the ones who literally do wealth extraction here. Yeah, <laughs> my friends, as as Ulf calls them. Um, okay, whether Kai Wegner or Franziska Giffey, who was born in the Brandenburg area. Uh-oh. That you know that. It's yeah. not, mm. <laughs> Both exude the charm of a vanished Berlin world. The one of the bizarre... Kai Wigner with charm? <laughs> like, oh, he has lots to say about that. Of- <laughs> he has lots to say about that. Uh, uh, both exude the charm of a vanished Berlin world. The one, uh, uh, the one, the bizarre and culturally as well as politically exotic, exotic West Berlin cosmos. That's his description of Kai Wegner. The other, the last convulsions of the GDR capital, Francisca Giffey. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's, I, what, well, that's always what I think about when I see her. It's like yeah. socialism, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Socialism with, with, you know, the CDU tendencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. with uh, uh, fake PhD characteristics. Uh, <laughs> Bettina Yarish, the Bavarian Swabian bourgeois daughter. Ooh, she walks like this. <laughs> embodies the bourgeoisie that has moved here much criticism has been i mean you know Ulf, you nailed it on the head king (laughs) you legit you you know what he's he's not right about a lot of things but yeah the green voter yeah you got it they're bougie af uh as you know what as much as as you know what bettina i dig your vibe queen you know what i you're kind of like the like the crunchy cool mom yeah um also i know that then that yeah uh, the greens are very weird, so and they're all very rich. 
So, yeah, Ulf got it. Uh, you know what? I got to chalk up one point for the king on this one. Much criticism has been poured out at the red, uh, um, red, 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 green Senate, and it has almost always been justified, according to Ulf. The extent of the dysfunctionality of even the most banal things is one thing. The obsession of this left-left coalition not to do the obvious and reasonable in order not to drive out its own somewhat narrow-minded voters is another. So here's the obvious and reasonable. Uh, appara- like, Be nicer to rich German people. <laughs> Apparently, he says sarcastically, there is no housing shortage in Berlin. Otherwise, the hideous allotments in the city center would have been built up long ago. Logically, also the Temple Hofferfeld. Then the social populist expropriation c- debate would also be off the table, which, like the rent cap, led to an emergency stop in housing construction. So yeah, just, you know, we need to build on top of Hopperfelds. Everyone's being silly. I mean, yeah. as if there was any house construction any going on anywhere else in Germany. Yeah. You know, the pro- and as somebody from the Temple of Hofferfeld initiative pointed out, like, there are apartments being built in Berlin. They just cost, you know, 30 euros per square meter. Like, yeah. there's not exactly a housing shortage. It's just a shortage of housing that people can afford. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, there is, there is like, I mean, the... I think anyone can like kind of like go around certain neighborhoods and just see that there's just empty buildings. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, there's and that fucking Amazon tower they're building. Yeah, like yeah. clearly there's resources in the city to yeah, build yeah, yeah. stuff. Or that freeway. God, they're gonna build that. Keep building that freeway now. Oh, what is it now called? Like the Klima Highway. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, literally called the fucking Klima Autobahn. Yeah, they're All gonna right. put uh, like solar panels besides the highway. Everything's fine. Yeah, <laughs> solar panel. It's it's on a, like a large treadmill, and you have to like go twice the speed to actually get <laughs> to your destination because you're you're powering through kinetic energy the rest of the city. Yeah, uh, but at least you stop by the uh, the the brand new uh, p- police monument on your way. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if we did sensible things, there would be no traffic in the city because the gr- the Greens like to torpedo driving, but offer no alternatives. Cycle paths are mostly empty. Subways and suburban trains offered often don't run. Um, oh, what are you, you come talking on. about? It? He's never been yeah, inside you, a subway. Never, yeah. Old Paulshot hasn't been on the U-Bahn since he was in university, probably. <laughs> For fuck's sake, when he, he must moved have seen a tweet here. one time about the train not coming. He's like, "Yep, there you go. Trains yeah. never come." Yeah. But Old Paulshot's also the type of person who would like give you then like, "Oh, like, well, the trains used to be on time." Fucking argument for why fascism is good, probably. You know, <laughs> like, come on. Speaking of which, he uh, then kind of like trails off into complaining about the clans. Uh, um. <laughs> Insert things that we that Google Translate really just went haywire with with the slurs. I don't understand why people don't love uh, clans. You know these FTP people. We're talking about families who <laughs> yeah. came to Germany with nothing, yeah. and they worked hard and they built up this huge realty portfolio. Absolutely, yeah, and exactly. Often using that in exploitative ways. Like if if these people had a different skin color, yeah. they would be the heads of. Yeah, the you'd be FTP listening party. to all their podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Not this one, though, because this one tells you don't do that. They don't get more credit, really. Yeah. Yeah. If it was like, you know, yeah, if if you're these so-called, you know, clans where, uh, you know, a bunch of white dudes with, like, you know, skinny jeans with rips in them and, like, all, like, severely too red from too much tanning or whatever weird diet they're all doing, like, Mm. all those weird crypto bros, then they'd love them, yeah. The all-meat diet, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never... The the thing that's... Have you ever noticed, too... (laughs) Uh-huh. On those like types of like crypto bro like finance podcasts, there's always one dude in a full suit. <laughs> <laughs> just like everyone else is in like a hoodie, and he's just like in a suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed that. Then like a lot of them, when you see like a lot of the guys, like and they're just like, oh yeah, like, like that that new trend that's like, oh girls, like whose fault is it for you know this type of bad behavior? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in that video, which those videos get cycled around, there's one dude always just randomly in a suit, <laughs> like a full tuxedo. <laughs> Yeah. But just like, what, dude? Did you like mom ask you like, oh, like, could you wear a suit when you podcast? <laughs> like, I bet you look like such a nice little handsome gentleman. You just look like a nice little boy. <laughs> yeah, <you>. exactly. <laughs> but then you also, uh, okay, I can't go to the rant there. But yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. We, have, you know what? Hey, for for the for the for the you know the the crime bosses in Berlin, maybe rebrand. Yeah. You know, like a get, weird kind of date rapey podcast. No, maybe not that. Yeah, no. <laughs> 
So, in his new section of this article called No Idea for Modernity, uh, um, we get the opening line, it gets even more bitter uh, for committed police officers who deal with hysterical climate gluers almost every day, while the Greens, also in the form of highly paid district mayors, pay solidarity visits to their sticky voters and activist stormtroopers. <laughs> stormtroopers? <laughs> uh. Yeah, I just checked the original German for that one. Okay, so a term that he's he's come up with and is using a lot right now in, in German is um, Klimakleberinnen. And he's very proud of this as like all one. All right, all right, all right. Everywhere. I gotta, I gotta give it. All right, I gotta give it to Ulf. Ulf, <laughs> Ulf is good. All right, my man. You know, one, he's good about the Bettina. You know, the just the green voter. Yeah, you're right. And Ulf comes through with an occasional really good word, and I really like Klima Kleba. That's a good one. Yeah. Like Klima Kleberinnen is yeah, a good yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, the other one that is just an absolute, just you know, fucking, you know, three pointer. You know. All net is Woko Haram. Woko Haram. <laughs> That's so good. That reached international audiences. People were like, the fuck is Woko Haram? You know what? I hate the connotation of it very bad, but you know it's so good. Yeah. He just like slammed down his laptop and was like, there's another, that's another house. Yeah. <laughs> I invented the Woko Haram. Yeah. He uh, literally, yeah, Ulf Poshad sat back, just lit a cigar, and was like, new Porsche, baby. He just, he ordered, like, a, a GT3 911, just like, you know, with 370 With grand. a license plate that says Woko Haram. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so sick. <laughs> Uh, It'd be cool if you were, like, pro-woke, po- like, if you were, like, a leftist with the woke Haram. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, he then starts to rant about Friedrichstrasse because everyone uh, uh, on the right in the city has been incredibly traumatized by Friedrichstrasse being pedestrianized. You know, yeah, that's, three, that's too small for cars. <laughs> yeah, and just being, like, jammed up anyway with, like, diplomatic, like, Mercedes and stuff that no one actually drove yeah. on, yeah. Um, a look at Friedrichstrasse, which I is saw. Oh, I saw Macron drive down there once. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> like, uh, um, I had to then, you know, alert all the French people I knew. Like, I saw your president. A look at Friedrichstrasse, which has been made car free again. Uh, almost as if in a coup d'état, <laughs> 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 and furnished with ugly pedestrian zone furniture, is enough to see that the wheel of time is being turned back here. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't my sexy car just take up the street? Why can't I honk at beautiful women who pass by at Friedrichstrasse? So his argument is that like pedestrianizing streets in Berlin harkens back to just immediately after the war when everything had kind of been blown up and no one had cars anymore. <laughs> it's like that's turning back the time. Um, there is no notion of modernity in the Senate. With road pricing and digitalization of traffic flow, Berlin could be the forerunner of congestion-free mobility. I think I get who he's writing what towards. Is, yeah, how do you uh, how do you get rid of all the cars with digitalization? No, like, it's, uh, it's an app now. Yeah, yeah your well, car's an app now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're gonna. Well, you see, because it's controlled by China. You know, and what China's gonna do is that they're gonna influence the children to, uh, you know. Uh, you know, kill their parents for driving cars. TikTok, TikTok dancing for patronized <laughs> yeah. streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dozens yeah. of cities in Europe can do better at the moment. The same applies to administration. The best startups once made an offer to the predecessor of Giffy to give the city a digital administration. The Social Democrat waved his hand in a snub. Um, I kind of looked into it. All those startups are now gone. <laughs> 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 just, just FYI, uh, money's real again, gang. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the Saudi Vision Fund has said no thanks. Um, <laughs> okay, the Berlin CDU ran an amazingly fresh <laughs> election campaign. Yeah, with like literally like you know a uh, 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 far right wing Voldemort as yeah. <laughs> their 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 candidate. Yeah, um, what an ugly man. <laughs> he's so it smooth. Be a good time to point out too that you know he's from Clado. I don't think. Any yeah. person living in Berlin would define that. I, I, I don't want to be like inside the ring of chauvinist here, but uh, 
But Cla- let's like let's be real. What's Brandenburg? <laughs> if that's not Brandenburg, I oh, yeah, what's Brandenburg? Little yeah. tiny yeah. village. There's you have to take a ferry. Like you have to go across <laughs> a body of water to get to Berlin from oh, there. Is that the free? Is that yeah. the ferry that you're like BV BV yeah. gay to get to Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's fun to visit. Cla- I just mean like obviously it's people who live there it's not a real place. have a different. Yeah, people always say that you know it's fun to visit Clado, but is it Berlin? No, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun to visit Clado the same way it's fun to visit Disneyland. This is not a real place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Everyone's a paid actor. Um, anyway, in his last yeah, chapter... Long Island's not a part of New York. <laughs> Clado's not a part of Berlin, baby. Get it get it right. Uh, in his last little section called Time for an Adrenaline Rush. <laughs> <laughs> dun it, dun it. <laughs> he, uh, he says, The FTP has made the best election campaign in a long time in Berlin. Um, I wonder why he says that after all those, like, you know, messages between Lindna and Tufna just fucking got published <laughs> the other day. Um, That's so wild to me, too, that Lindna's wife is a, or girlfriend is a, is a, a journalist at Vent. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, here, too, with a campaign that couldn't have been smarter, but unfortunately didn't catch on enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. Crazy how that works, right, King? Uh, um, f- fucking, I've already forgotten his name. Uh, uh, Chaya, Chaya, right? Oh, Sebastian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 Chaya. Chaya yeah. yeah, he had his uh, his whole campaign of like trying I, to get everyone who voted against Intiagnon to all vote FTB, and everyone was like, actually, no. <laughs> yeah, um, he's also the one too whose campaign is I look close enough to Christian Linder in these pictures, right? To trick you, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same way when your your granny goes to like the DVD store for you back in the, back in the day and will get you a copy of uh, uh, like Michael B- May's Transmorgers. This <laughs> 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 is what you wanted, dude. Yeah, isn't exactly. It? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's like when 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 my friends bought a bought a bootleg copy of Avatar that was just the person <laughs> filming in the theater. Hell yes. <laughs> Um, okay after the New Year's Eve riots the anti-Israel demos and in, and in view open drug scenes in Kreuzberg which has felt like a green government for a hundred years bro you work at Ved talk about an open drug scene what are the fucking <laughs> offices like there like <laughs> Jesus Christ I mean especially after the like the uh, 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 Julian Reichert shit I've just yeah. said to the fucking coke house that is Oh my god, shut up. I love um I love one of the funny things that happened with Berlin recently is they did a survey for who's doing the most cocaine in Germany and Berlin came out as the most cocaine consuming city, but funnily enough, Frankfurt on Main was omitted from the survey. So <laughs> <laughs> leave, yeah. leave what you will of that. Their money's so good they can pay to get off the survey, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so all this stuff is to say, yeah, the, it feels like the Green have been in government for a hundred years because all this stuff's happening. But then we end with this paragraph. In terms of economic policy... Oh, so he just like laid all of that out with n- no buildup, nothing, just the like... article's over. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, here's all this shit about Berlin that one... I mean, yeah, like, Olaf lives here, but I don't think he he goes out of like maybe like a two kilometer radius like walking and then just does everything else probably like driving around town so like doesn't actually interact with anyone yeah yeah so except for the the time that he like does like 180 kilometers per hour like speeding all the way to frankfurt and order to get like fireworks for new year's (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) careens off the bridge into poland (laughs) like but he's allowed to do that. Uh, rich white guys, fireworks on New Year's are yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. This is only if brown people have fireworks, fireworks, then it becomes a riot. But fireworks uh, on New Year's has always been the, politi- the political right has always been in favor of that until one year <laughs> for unexplainable reasons. Um, in terms of economic policy, Berlin would have endless opportunities. The myth of the city remains significant globally. After years of experimentation and excess and ruins during the 90s, Berlin now seems dated, tame and desolate. It's time for an adrenaline rush, which will return. Uh, uh, um, it will return. One can only assume uh, that the market and economy ambition returns as well. This is actually only possible with the union and the FTB, but which together have zero power options. 
So his whole thing is like the only people who can steer their ship is like a, a yellow black government, but no one will ever vote for them because they're not me. Ulf Blochart. Yeah. All right. I was really expecting a different ending. Okay. Uh, that was very anticlimactic. I was expecting just like, and this is why Berlin needs to become a special economic zone <laughs> <laughs> because. Well, yeah. Voting. For yeah. The, I mean, voting for the FTP in the city is basically just saying it needs to become a special economic zone. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think Berlin will really get its uh, cool uh, reputation back once uh, we tear down about blank uh, to build a highway. You know, <laughs> I feel like that's what tourists have really been clamoring for. Wait, you said about blank has to get torn down to put that to put that yeah, highway? Yeah, I guess there? I, I guess I'm neutral on tearing down about blank. Wait, but not yeah, for yeah, a, yeah, like, wait, hold not, on, maybe not, not maybe for a highway <laughs> though, not for a highway. Yeah, 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 yeah. what are you going to replace it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, only like uh, about blank. Compared to the alternative, yeah, well, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah, the alternative is is you know the a the last hole. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we brought the giant mech in from West Germany. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's actually like it's actually a monument to the to the giant mech. I need to learn that thing's name. Uh, I keep no, joking no. About once too much. you, because then, then that means that, that, there's a metal song about it. <laughs> is it <there> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, well, that means that you give it respect yeah. and that you, you know, do you do you want to respect it? I don't want to respect it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the the new monument next to the monuments. Yeah, like about blank is shut down and replaced with a monument to the police, <laughs> uh, surrounded by three. I mean, isn't it spaces. already? <laughs> like, but um. Sh- hey. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Yeah. And uh, that's been an episode of Corner Spady. Uh, uh, Nathaniel, thank you for coming on. Is it is it gauche for me to mention the name of my book? I was about to let you do that, but yes, oh. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, we like we, we briefly just kind of covered uh, the silly things around one day that happened here. Mostly just kind of, of, of what I think the transformations that we've also just kind of seen living in a city for even like this short period of time, I mean, like we can always look at like the historical aspects mm. of like Berlin, which your book actually does uh, for, if you do live here, it makes it an incredibly fun, interactive way of yeah. exploring the city and exploring things that I, I mean, you know, I like to think of myself as someone who knows Berlin pretty well. I've lived <laughs> here for 10 years, you know? Um, but no, there really is, uh, there's so much, uh, I mean, you couldn't talk about everything, of course, but you break it down into things that I think are are, are are great topics that then interest the left. Like I mentioned briefly, the decolonial aspect. Um, you, we were talking uh, off uh, mic earlier of that there's a special section in your book on queer Berlin that's also mm. quite, you know, up to date, I would say. Um, and really kind of going through then things of, because I mean, we, everyone knows, I mean, not everyone, but I'm mean, like, you get enough of the dumb things of like Hitler was here and there's the bunker and this and that, which is like, of course, mentioned in the book and whatnot, of course, because you can't acknowledge it. I mean, you can't not acknowledge it. Yeah. But there is so much more to that than Berlin has to offer that then one isn't just so depressing, like, oh, World War Two Cold War, bah, yeah. depressing, whatever, reconstruction that then shows this as continuously a lively city in a very like, you know, regardless of the current government that we're currently in, you know, the the, you know, Groco hellhole that <laughs> has been, you know, brought upon us. Um Berlin still, I would always argue, regardless of how many people move here, is still quite radical compared to other cities, especially because to a lot of people a lot of people who can't vote have quite radical politics as well. And yeah, I mean it really it uh, this is a book that then I found fun again to live in Berlin, and mm-hmm. I recommend that then if you if you live here, if you uh, uh, um, you know come and visit, uh, I think I even gave a PDF of because we got so many of these copies of this book. We got sent three <laughs> copies. Thank you very much. I think I even <laughs> like <laughs> I think I even sent some to friends, just being like, hey, yeah, like there'd, maybe there'd be stuff to like that you'd want to like check out for when you come to Berlin. So, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a guidebook that's very much like not intended for tourists. I mean, I mean, tourists should buy it too, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. but it's uh, more for like looking at like you know random apartment buildings and like thinking. I don't know. I go to this uh, Rossmann in Nikon. I don't think that's in the book, or maybe I don't know. But I go to this Rossmann in Nikon, like this, you know, drugstore, and reading like, holy shit! This 110 years ago, this was a movie theater, and Rosa Luxemburg gave lectures about imperialism <laughs> here. Yeah, <laughs> like where I'm buying like toothpaste. Yeah, I don't know stuff like that. Just uh, it, it, it's like totally different than reading about uh, uh, history in a book. If you're like, oh, it was it was 
exactly yeah. where I'm standing right now. And where I'm buying you know, this tube of toothpaste yeah, and you know, and Dirk Rossman's new climate science fiction book that he's writing. <laughs> yeah, that he sells exclusively at Rossman. I know. I'm sorry. I'm cool. I live in Berlin. I'm buying an ungodly amount of lube for my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> From Rossman. From Rossman. From Rossman. <laughs> Star brand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I also don't, you know, because I'm German. You know, the fucking the the the, the sex you- stores they they charge you to actually it's very much the opposite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you were buying your lube at DM and not Rossman, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get <Yeah>. a coupon. <laughs> Ask your parents uh, if they got the latest <laughs> the latest coupon announcements. <laughs> Ask them where to get but big yeah, batch I've, of lube. I've been a uh, I've been really enjoying this book as well. Uh, I'm about halfway through it at the moment, and I'm. Uh, um, I've been picking and choosing, which is the best yeah. part about it, is that I don't like, I, I literally got to do a choose your own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> do not want to look at World War II? Uh, that's upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's cool too because there'll be like some, like some things that then it's like I'll find myself like in the part of like a town like yeah, in the day yeah, be like, sure. oh, I read about this. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, something as silly as like a lost man or whatever, or like walking over to a friend's house or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's but a very yeah. like interactive, lively Fun and experience. you live you live in vetting, right? Yeah, there's a lot in vetting. Yeah, so I um next time I put out a book, I've got like I started a new walking tour in vetting now. I learned a lot about it. I had basically never been there before. It's like holy shit, there's a river yeah. here. You can walk down a <laughs> river bank uh, through vetting. A panka? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Very super picturesque. Cool. Vetting at, rocks. I had no idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, I I live in Gazumbrunen, and I in my household observe the 2001 ordinance order from the local city state and insist. Zumbrun is not wet vetting. <laughs> it is its <laughs> own neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Depumper, baby. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kieran's always throwing Gazumbrun in related gang signs at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'd like to, like, for the sake of radical history, I'd like to include myself in vetting because if you just do Gazumbrun by itself, it's most of the time it's literally just the flak turn of just like, ah, the, the Nazis had a thing here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what you're defending with those gang signs. That's apparently, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there will be links in the description to where you can pick up a copy of the book, as well as I'm sure information about where Nathaniel, uh, uh, how to get on one of Nathaniel's tours if you're in the city. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Uh, and with that, oh, I also need to shout out because it's getting close. Thirteenth of May, Twitch.tv forward slash Corner Spady. We are doing our Eurovision live stream uh, uh, again, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to lose my mind. And yeah, yeah. I'm going to lose my mind, too, but in a fun way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're going to lose your mind in the sense that you obsess over Eurovision. <laughs> and this is your life. <laughs> yeah, this is literally your, like, minority report board in front of you. Yeah. Night yeah, yeah, yeah. Of just, like, you know, you're with, moving the things with your which mind. Which jury has been bribed by which country? Yeah. It's going to be great. They already got rid of juries because Azerbaijan is just doing too much corruption and bribing too many <laughs> people. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. All right. And with that... Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.